Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. I yesterday I forget to open Zoom, and so I record this video. So in this tutorial, we mainly talk about four search algorithms from the idea to the code, and um, these two, these first two algorithms, the test first search and the breast first search, is very important. And if you go to a job interview or you do research in the future, um, these two algorithms you should be able to write them. And they are very fundamental. Uh, so, and the code in this tutorial is basically for graph search. And the main difference between graph search and tree search is that graph search will not expand a state twice. So, if you do a breast first search on this graph here, um, you might do start from node 0 and you've got two children, node 1 and node 2, and after you visit node 2, because node 1 is also a children of node 2, so you might visit node 1 twice. But in a graph search, we will not do this, which means that when we visit node 1 and then we come to node 2, and although node 2 has a children node 1, we will not visit it again. So let's start from that first search and that first search has two two main characteristic one is that you will always expand one of the nodes at the depth level of the tree and another characteristic is that you will only when the search hits the dead end does the search go back and expand the nodes at the shadow level so let's look at an example let's start from node zero and Node 0 has two children, node 1, node 2, so we go to node 1. And um, here we assume that we will always choose the node with a lower index, which means we have node 1 and 2, we will choose node 1. So here we find that node 1 also have a children node 3, so we ignore node 2 and directly go to node 3 because we always expand the node at the deepest level of the tree. So here we come to node 3 and similarly we get node 5, node 4, and node 7. And here we found that the node 7 have only one children, no, only one child, which is node 5. And we will do a graph search, which means that we will not visit node 5 twice. So here means that we, we are in a dead end. So the search algorithm will go back to node 5 and then we have to visit another children of node 5, which is node 8. And then similarly, we get to node 6 and to the goal. So here we find that um, it has a naturally recursive structure in DFS, which means that if we visit node 1, actually we can ignore node 0 and node 2. We are apply a new DFS on node 1 here, like this. Yeah, we can ignore these two nodes. So how to write the recursive algorithm for DFS? Um, we can just like visit a node and then we run DFS on its neighbors. So here is how the how the code goes. And uh, for synchronicity, we here we assume that our goal is just to traverse the whole graph, so we don't need any stop condition in this graph to make it simple. So this algorithm is like visiting a node for every neighborhood of current node we apply DFS on it. But this algorithm actually has some problems. As I said, we are in a graph search. We should not visit a node twice. So if we start from node 0, he has one children, two children, node 1 and node 4, and we come to node 1. And then again, we will do a DFS on node 1, but node 0 actually is also one children of node 1, so we might visit node 0 again. So how to avoid this? Um, simply we add a visited list, or in some tutorial you might say it's a closed list. So we use this list to um, store the node we already visited. And after we visit a node, we put it into the visited list. And before we apply DFS on a node, we will check if it is in the visited list. Uh, very simple, right? So here the recursive function for DFS is already done. And let's use an example to see how it works. So start from node 0, we use DFS recursive 0, and we visit it, and we apply, uh, append it to the visited list. And for every of these neighbors, we do a DFS on it. So we come to the DFS 1, which means DFS on node 1. So here he has two children, uh, because node 0 is already in the list. So we have two children, 
So we choose node 2 and we apply DFS on node 2. Similarly, we got node 3. And here, node 3 don't have a children or neighbor. There is no in the visited list. So we, we can't um, run this iteration. So the DFS 3 comes to an end. And then we exit the DFS 3 and back to DFS 2. So the iteration for DFS 2's neighbor um, no, node 2 has two children, um, node 1, node, four, uh, node 3, and node 4. And we already visit node 3, so we will come to node 4. So here is how the whole algorithm goes. And after we finish DFS 4, we will add in the DFS for 4, and for 2, and for 1, and for 0. And the whole algorithm comes to an end. So um, actually, there are also another kind of algorithm for DFS, which is called iterative algorithm. And we can see from the two characteristics of DFS, like it always expand the node with the deepest level of the tree. So when we have node 0, it has two children, 1 and 2, we choose node 1. And then we find that node 1 has children, node 3. So we directly go to node 3, ignore node 2. And then here, similarly, node 3 has two children, node 5 and 6. And we ignore node 2 and directly go to node 5. We are always visit the node we last found. So here, another example is uh, another characteristic is that we will meet the node with a uh, node expansion. We will go to the node at shallow level. So, if we visit node seven, we find that uh, none of its children haven't been visited. We will go to node eight instead of node six because we visit we found node eight later than node six. So it's a last found first visit manner here. So, um. There is a data structure that fits this manner, which is called the stake. And when we want to store the neighbors of a node, we just append them to the stake or push them into the stake. And when we want to choose a node to visit, we pop it up from the stake. And the stake has a first in, first out manner, which can help us to expand the nodes at the deepest level. Um, six so is work like this. We put an, put some nodes into it, and when we pop a node out of it, uh, we will always choose the node that is close to the top of the stake. Which means that um, let's start from node zero. It has two children, node one and node three, and we put it into a stake like this. And node one is closer to the top, so we will pop it out. And similarly, if we have two children of node one, node two, and three, we put it into the stake. And node 2 is closer to the top, so we when we pop out, we get node 2. And so how to write the code? As I said, we use push action to store the neighbors of current nodes. So in this iteration, like for the neighbors of current node, we just put it into the stake. And we when we want to choose a node to visit, here, we just pop out a node from the stake. And the first in last last in first out manner can help us to automatically choose the node we last found to visit. And similar to the recursive function, we also have uh, like a visited list to um, to help us not visit a node twice. So similarly, we go to an example. So let's start from node zero. He has two children, node one and node four. So so. We just push it into the stake, and then we choose node one. We pop it out, and then push the neighbors of node one, which is node two and four. And here we get two node four in the stake, but that doesn't matter. Um, um, so here, um, similarly, we come to node two, and he has no children, node three and four, and we just like usual, we put it into the stake, and we already have. Four node three node four in the stake, but um since we since if the first node four come out from the stake, we'll visit it and we will append it to the visited list. So these two node four that left in the stake will make nothing difference because um we can pass them by these conditions. Because um, node four is already in the visited list, so when we pop these two nodes out, we will do nothing. Okay. 
And um, one thing I need to mention is that uh, the node 4 we pop out, um, the one we visit and do actions, is the one from node 2 because we found it later than these two node 4 um, because um, we visit node 2 later than we visit node 1 and 0 so this node 4 actually is come from node 2 so if node 4 is our goal um, our path is like node 0, node 1, node 2, node 4 and there are actually there are three edge comes to node 4 and we are not choosing the optimal path like right um, what we want is a path from node 0 to 4 and so some people might do uh, like they move this line of code from here to here uh, which means that um, if we put it here after we visit a node we'll append it to the visited list uh, but if we put it here it means that when we found the node we put it in the visit list assuming that we already visit this node and um, what's difference between these two code is that um, like start from node 0 we have node 1 and node 4 and we put node 4 into the stake so here um, as node 4 already in the stake when we visit node 1 he has two children node 2 and 4 we will not put node 4 into the stake again so when we pop the node 4 out actually it come from node 0 and we got the optimal path to node 4 um, but I, I need to say it's not always the case um, I'm not mean that this kind of code can you um, can give us an optimal solution always um, it's just in some cases like in your assignment okay so here is all about DFS and I want to make an important note here um, for recursive or iterative function in practical implementation they are similar and you can see no significant difference between these two algorithms if you run it on a huge graph um, and they are like have a time like O V plus E V is the number of nodes E is the number of edge and but the recursive function for DFS is more formal because it's cleaner and easier to read but this iterative function is also important because um, it's more generalizable to other search algorithm and you can simply change some part of it to make the goal of your search algorithm difference um, and you will find why I said it is more generalizable later so let's first come to the breast first search and similarly we start from the two characteristic of breast first search so when the root node is expanded first then all the nodes generated by root node are expanded next and then it's successors and successors and successors um, it's quite like uh, breast first is working like a level by level and so here node 0 has a depth 0 and these two have depth 1 and these have depth 2 so we will visit the node at depth 0 and then the nodes in depth 1 and then the nodes in depth 3 so let's look at an example we start from node 0 we have it has two children node 1 and 2 so we will visit them first and then node 1 has a children node 3 and then we we'll visit it Similarly, node 5 and 6 and 4 and 8 and go. Okay. Mm, and um, the process of BFS is not naturally recursive, but it has a first file, first visit manner because um, start from node 0, we found node 1 and 2, so we visit them. And then uh, when we visit node 1, we got node 3. Uh, we found node 3 later then we found node 2 so we'll visit node 2 before we visit node 3 so <clears throat> it's like we visit the node at depth d and then we find the node at depth d plus 1 and then we visit the node at depth d plus 1 and we found the node at d depth d plus 2 it's almost a first found first visit manner and there is also one data structure that fits this manner which is called the queue and 
Um, similarly, when we want to store the neighbors of current node, we push them into the queue. And when we want to choose a node to visit, we pop it out from the queue. And the first inference of matter of queue can help us to expand nodes at the shallowest level. And the queue is work like this. When we put a node into it, it comes in this way. And we, when it goes up, it comes from the button. So the first count node, like the node 1, will be popped out first. So node 1 will come out from the queue before node 3. Right? And let's see how we write the code. Um, as I said, um, you will find why DFS iterative function is generalizable. Um, you can see here, we just replace the stake with a queue. And then the function works very well. This is the code for iterative algorithm for DFS. DFS. And so we use an example to see how it works. So we start from node 0, and it has two children, node 1 and 4. We put it, push it into the queue, and then pop node 1, and get two of its children, node 2 and 4. Um, and then similarly, we put it into the queue. Uh, this node 4 is come from node 1. Okay. So then we visit node 4 because it is close to the button. And we pop it out, we visit it, and it has two children, or one children, node 2. So we push it in the queue. And the second node 4 here, as node 4 is already visited, um, we will just pass it because we will do nothing to it. So when we pop on this node 2, uh, we will automatically pass the node 4 here. And this node 2 is similar. Um, we will pass it because we already visited node 2 here. And you could find that um, um, this node 4 is, has a path. If it, node 4 is the goal again, um, the path to node 4 is come from node 0. It's an optimal path. And so you will have no difference if we move this line of code from here to here, right? Um, because um, because BFS has a first fall first visit manner, so the first time you find a node, you will visit it, and um, after you visit this node, uh, whether you um, uh, if the node is in the stake, uh, even you put more uh, the same node into the stake, they will make no difference because we will visit the node we found first. Okay. And then we will talk about two uh, little bit compli complicated um, search algorithms. One is the iterated deepening search, and another is the uniform cost search. Um, we will go to iterated deepening search first. And um, iterated deepening search has a strategy that sidestep the issue of choosing the best depth limit by trying all possible depth limits. So we will first try DFS at the limited depth zero like here, and then try the DFS with the limited test 1, like here, and then 2. And um, here it has a graph. If we apply the iterated deepening search on it, um, the deeper the color, the more time the node is visited. So we visit node 0 actually 5 times if we want to traverse the whole graph. And you might wonder why we need to do these redundant actions, because we actually visit some node many, many times. Um, and here gives you an example, an extreme example to illustrate why we need this iterated deepening search. And we have node 0 here. It has n children. Uh, n is a very, very large number. And the first children of node 0 is node 1. It also has n number children. n is a very, very large number. So if we want to find this goal here at level 1, um, if we apply BFS, before we start to searching, we need to push all the children of node 0 into the queue, right? Here, like here. So it takes too much space, right? Um, and similarly, if we want to run DFS to find this goal, as the first children, first child of node 0 has n children, we need to search through node 1, apply DFS on node 1 first before we come to node 0. Oh, sorry, node the goal. 
So it will take too much time for DFS. Um, so if we use a uh, iterative deepening search with limited uh, depth one, it will directly search start from like node zero and then node one and then node three directly find the goal with very very few um, space and time, right? Okay. Um, so then how to write the iterative deepening search? Um, actually, it's very very easy. We just um, need to limit the depths of DFS. So here we start from a DFS recursive function and we use a mass depth as a global variable to limit the uh, depths of iterative deepening search. Um, so here we use uh, iteration to gradually increase the maximum depth and then we design this function IDDFS which means iterative deepening DFS. Okay. Um, and this, the second input uh, denotes the depth the current function is in. And so if we visit a node, we will add one to the depth. This can help us like we start from node zero. And then for every neighbor, we will apply IDDFS on it. And then um, the depth will automatically plus one, which means that node zero will be in depth one and this end node will automatically in depth 2 and this will be in depth 3 right because when we visit a node we will add 1 to its depth okay um so this is how the iterated deepening search goes and if we apply it to this graph and our goal is to traverse the whole graph, we just need to set the maximum depth as 5 and it will automatically run and visit all the nodes in this graph. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's go to the final, un final search algorithm. It's the uniform cost search and uniform cost search just modifies the BFS by always expanding the lowest cost Note on the fringe, uh, and fringe is data structure. Okay, um, so let's start from node zero. Um, node zero have two children, node one and node two. Node one has a cost three, node two has a cost one. So we go to node two, and then we update the cost for node one. So we go to node one like this way, because this node one has a cost two, and this node one has a cost three. So we go to it this way. And then we have no choice, so we go to node 3. And then um, node 5 have a cost uh, 6, five, six again. and node 6 has a cost 8, so we go to node 5 and node 4. And node 7 has a cost 10, node 6 has a cost 8, so we go to node 6. Okay, and then we find the goal. Right, like this way. So, what's different between uniform cost search and BFS? Um, uh, on, I mean, what things we should do to uh, achieve the code for uniform cost search? Um, you might think we need to update the cost of a node, and we also need to compute the cost of a node, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, as uniform cost search, we're always expanding the lowest cost node. We need to find a data structure that fits this manner, um, which is called a priority queue. And similarly, we store the neighbors by push, and we choose a node by pop, and the priority can help us sorting the nodes with its cost. So if we start from node 0, it has two children, node 1 and 3. Um, node 1 has a lower cost, so it's more close to the button. And if we pop it up, we will get node 1. And similarly, we when we um, visit node 1, it has two children, uh, node 3 again, and node 2. And this node 3, by this way, has a cost 2. So it will come to the bottom of the priority queue. And when we pop out, we will get this node 3 um, from the node 1. And so actually, uh, if we are using a priority queue, we don't need to update the cost of a node. Because if we put the same node with different costs into the priority queue, it will, already, it will help us to automatically use the node with lower cost. Right? Two node 3, and we choose the one with lower cost. OK. Um, and then is how to write the code. Um, as I said, we need to compute the cost. So uh, first, we start from a breakfast search algorithm, and we replace the queue with a priority queue. 
and then we use a function to uh, use a line of code to compute the cost of current uh, of a neighbor of current nodes, like the cost of current node plus the edge from the node to the neighbor. Okay, very easy. And there are um, some cases we might need to sort, and most cases it will automatically sorting. Uh, that's priority queue. Okay, and here is all about the search algorithm today. And here is um, the things you might more care about is about the assignment for. And in this assignment, we just need to like you implement the search algorithm on a specific scenario, which is the Pac-Man scenario. And Pac-Man is uh, like a popular game, and um, in our assignment, you need to build a general search algorithm for this Pac-Man to help him start from the initial node, and you will help him to like find the dot here, uh, which is his goal. You run algorithm, help him to to find the path. Okay, and all the code is in Python 3. You don't need to install uh, any packages. It can run on basic Python 3. Okay. We adopt this project from UC Berkeley, but um, and so because this project is very very famous, and um, I in assignment four, I just ask you to write five search algorithm. One is request DFS and iterated DFS, BFS, uniform code search, and A star. Um, they are very similar actually. Um, as I said, the DFS iterative algorithm is very very generalizable. So after you finish the DFS iterative function, you almost finish the assignment. Okay. And um, um, what's different between this assignment and the code in our tutorial um, is that um, in this tutorial, our goal is just to traverse the whole uh, the whole graph. Uh, but in this assignment, you need to find the path to the goal. Um, it means that you need to add some end condition. If you find the goal, the search is end. And you also need to store the path toward the goal because you need to give a path to this pen man. Otherwise, he don't know what to do. So you need to find a way to store the path um, when you, you are doing searching. Okay, it's very, very easy. And I encourage you to like you try by yourself first. And if you can't, and you can refer to this tutorial. We can directly use the code here. Um, this code is not pseudo code. They actually, they are Python code, and you can simply like modify it, change it to the uh, function in the Python project, and then you can, and then they work. Okay, they work. Okay, it's very simple project. Um, and all you need to do is to submit one of the file in the project. And actually, I, I found that um, this is only part of assignment 4. Assignment 4 might also have another question. Uh, it's not about searching. It's my, I, I remember it's about CNN. OK. And um, as this uh, assignment, uh, this project, is very famous. You might be able to find some answer in the website, like in GitHub, but you should not uh, copy any of them. I already downloaded all the code I can find. I will check it very carefully. Okay, um, and that's all for today's tutorial. Um, half an hour. Okay, thank you.